Hi there. My name is Peter Coffin, and uh, probably like you, I have recently heard a lot of times that seed oils are killing me. But are they killing me? If I'm going to be completely honest, I think that they're not. Now, keep in mind, I look into scientific research every time I, I decide to make one of these types of opinions. And if, if you're anything like me and do that, uh, you may have found something interesting. And this whole thing speaks to this massive problem that I think we are having everywhere. It has nothing to do with seed oils, and you're going to know exactly what it is when I get to it. Uh, the first thing you've probably found is that it seems entirely useless to look into this stuff because they only study one tiny little effect of seed oils. And that makes sense because that's how scientific research works. You find something that you can isolate, try to figure out as much as you possibly can about it. And if you want to find a more macro look at, at it, it, you get you get interesting results, like uh, this one by BMC Medicine, a Chinese uh, thing. The evil communists who hate business, uh, you know, those guys. They identified 521,120 participants aged 50 to 70 and documented 129,328 deaths over the following 16 years, finding... That substituting corn oil, canola oil, or olive oil for equal amounts of butter or margarine was related to lower all-cause mortality and mortality from certain causes. But hey, what does the Zhejiang University School of Medicine know? I want to know what the capitalists think. So I spent a bunch of time looking through Western academic medicine, and I tended to find more things like how I described at the beginning. More of a kind of isolated uh, compound or trait and the effects that stem from that very specific thing like uh, omega-6 or some other buzzword from this controversy. <laughs> I don't know. The only way you can really look into seed oils as a whole if you look into Western medicine is um, this type of systematic review. Uh, what, and what that does is that aggregates the results of a bunch of other studies. The problem is I can't find a systematic review that doesn't have this problem. Publication of these papers was supported by unrestricted educational grants from blah, 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 lots of stuff. But in particular, International Nut and Dried Fruit Council. Basically, the International Nut and Dried Fruit Council paid enough for this that it's what I would consider a conflict of interest. Like, a lot of the types of oils that people are complaining about, it's all lumped under seed oils, but nuts are actually a large thing in terms of where that stuff comes from. So although the research that this type of systematic review is based on is independent, at least in terms of what could be considered a conflict of interest, obviously has an incentive to aggregate information that's beneficial to uh, people who might be a member of the International Nut and Dried Fruit Council. This is that massive problem I was talking about. Here's a study that was probably not funded by somebody who has a capitalistic interest in this. The relationship between funding source and conclusion among nutrition-related scientific articles. Let's just quickly look at the conclusion. It's very simple, uh, much more simple than you would regularly see in a scientific article. Industry funding of nutrition-related scientific articles may bias conclusions in favor of sponsors' products with potentially significant implications for public health. So, obviously, I don't think seed oils are particularly bad, but I'm also not really here to defend them, per se. That's not really what this is about. If you look through the research, you find that there's not really a big problem with seed oils. And again, there was that Chinese research that I showed that correlates it with a massive sample size, might I add, uh, with better health outcomes when compared to butter and margarine, at least. I found enough scientific research as I was doing this uh, with all of these smaller, like, effects of saturated fat versus polysaturated fat type things. And I found enough work by other people who have also gone through all that to conclude that I don't think seed oils are the problem. I think that there's people with an embedded interest for us to see seed oils positively, but I don't really think that's what matters. What I want to talk about here is, is how fucking impossible it is to find anything that isn't tainted by money. Because uh, the relationship between funding source and conclusion among nutrition-related scientific articles doesn't 
just apply to um, systematic reviews of seed oils, but also all of the stuff that backs up some fad diet that markets itself as the solution to seed oils or sugar or carbs or whatever. All of the various things that we've been told are making us fat over the last five or six decades of getting fatter and fatter as a country. I'm going to tell you what I came up with. I think it's pretty common sense, and I don't think anybody's going to be particularly impressed by it. But I think that seed oils are associated with fried foods, right? And fried foods uh, aren't just, you know, seed oil. They're also a bunch of other stuff. Uh, flour. There's a lot of that in fried food. Uh, the skin is usually mostly flour. Lots of salt, lots of sugar, lots of things. In fact, that's the primary thing that I'm getting at here. There's lots of things in fried food. A and we eat a lot of it. Like, what do we measure the energy capacity of food in? Do you know what it is? It's calories. That's what calories are. They're a measure of the energy capacity in food. And when you start talking about it that way, it starts to immediately become obvious what the real problem is. And somebody might say, well, we're, we're all eating too much. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that most food is made to be total garbage. Uh, it's, it's usually full of stuff uh, that makes it much higher in calories than it needs to be. And yeah, can you eat a little less? Sure. It's tough to. And the, the reason why people say, well, dieting is personal responsibility and that's bullshit. The reason that rings true for so many people is because uh, dialectical materialism and idealism, um, that dichotomy applies here too. Materialism is about your conditions, about uh, what you're surrounded with, about what's there, about what is necessary, about what you can't avoid, about where you are, about how much money you have, etc. And it's not always easy to make the right choice when those conditions are not right. In fact, it's almost impossible. If you do, you are the exception rather than the rule. Uh, this whole personal responsibility thing, it's, it's idealism. It's saying the brain creates the reality. It's saying I manifest the result. You think the secret is dumb? Well, you think uh, just straight up deciding that you're going to lose weight uh, is dumb too because it's the same thing. The reason why diets work isn't because of willpower and conscious decisions. Although, I mean, you do have to make those. It, the reason diets work, though, is because you change the conditions that you live in. And when you change those conditions, whether you consciously want to or not, you start forming different habits. I mean, you probably want to. I mean, that's, that's, that's the point of it, right? All that to say, uh, the conditions that Americans are surrounded by are, are tremendously unhealthy. Our food, like I said, is made in a way where it has so much more calories in it than it needs to. Now, that isn't to say I'm against personal development. I've lost a lot of weight in the last few years. I was up in the 240s. I'm now in the 190s. But I will say a lot of that has happened due to my mental health getting a lot better. Uh, over the last few years, I got divorced. I don't, I don't think my marriage was really... That helpful for me. And not, not to shit on my ex-wife or anything. I wish her nothing but the best. I hope everything is good for her at all times. But I think it was a situation that was actually quite bad for both of us. And as I have slowly healed from the problems that I had during then, I've also just gotten a lot healthier. That's because my mind is clear when I'm making decisions. I'm not depressed as I'm thinking about food. I've seen videos by people who have made similar points to what I'm making, but they always land on personal responsibility. Scientifically speaking, calories in, calories out is 100% correct. The reason you're getting fatter is because you're not running at a calorie deficit. It's that simple. But why? A lot of the times, the problems that contribute to making the wrong decisions uh, have much more to do with uh, one's mental health than one's willpower. It's not just the food you're eating, because that, the food you're eating, it's actually a result of a lot of other things going on. In fact, everything in your life is the result of tons of other things going on. Some of it you have control over it. Most of it you don't. I spend a lot of time telling people to stop talking about individual shit because of the way they're talking about individual shit. They talk about it 
as though it is the way to make the world better, and it's not. And for the most part, they aren't even talking about it in a way that's going to benefit the individual making the choices, because it's all about the choices. It's all about willpower and dictating a result and just saying, well, I'm stubbornly going to do that thing. Like, it is entirely possible to get very, very heavy, uh, unhealthily heavy, without consuming any oil whatsoever. Uh, but I would argue that that's also uh, just not something that you're naturally going to do because the conditions around you aren't conducive towards it. If you do want to make your own life better, yes, you do have to find the change within yourself and commit to it. But the change you have to commit to is that of changing the conditions around you. That's not easy to do, especially in this system, which sucks terribly, like terribly. It's set up to exploit you, which means you're supposed to be left with the least beneficial essence of life possible. That's why such a thing as a support group exists, because there's a community that recognizes a problem, and those people can come together and address it together. Knowledge about the problem is spread between people who are experiencing the problem. But the reason why a lot of this bad stuff happens is just alienation and uh, uh, bad conditions. I think that the way that people generally talk about it in like fitness videos or exposés on seed oils, it tends to be about either blaming yourself or blaming some other people and maybe saying that that's blaming the system, but that's not really blaming the system. But even so, I don't think finding the right thing to blame is necessarily productive. Criticism that is useful is about identifying contradictions. That's why it's hard for me to be like, seed oil's debunked, because the contradiction of all of the easy-to-read research being funded in some way by somebody who might have an interest in a certain answer, I don't feel comfortable repeating that as fact. But society's expectations around food have shifted significantly, uh, both as the cost of food goes up and down in various directions. The quality of food goes up and down in various directions. And the interests of the people selling food to us change. I don't think blaming on any one individual little thing, whether it be sugar, carbs, or, or seed oils, matters. Like, they're shoving cheap, horrible shit into the poor people, and the good stuff's going to the rich people. Ever wonder why the rich look so much better than the poor? That's part of it. I don't know, except Madonna. Holy shit. Wow. Ugh. So to sum things up, the problem isn't seed oils. Seed oils aren't killing you. Seed oils aren't making you fat. They're probably not making you cardiovascularly unhealthy. They might, if China is to be believed, uh, be good for you, at least in certain ways. But what I really want to leave you with is that all these videos telling you that seed oils are, are the real reason why we're so fat or we're all sick. Just like the companies they claim to be fighting, they have a financial incentive as well. Not only that, but they're examining it as metaphysically as anybody else is. They're honing in on one tiny little element and just finding stuff to reinforce their own narrative. If you can find a way to eat a bunch less fried food, I think you'll get healthier. Like, that has nothing to do with seed oil. Like, if you're frying stuff in butter or rendered fat, I, I get the feeling that, like, it's not going to be a lot different, the outcome, if you're eating the same amount of fried shit. I don't know. That's that's all I've got for today. Uh, 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 like, comment, subscribe, maybe become a patron. Hope you enjoyed this, and I uh, hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.